Hey YouTube, this is Itchy. Uh, it's been almost a month since my daughter had a, a strange rash that developed on her arm um, after she had been drenched in a rainstorm, which I found out a few days later um, after she had developed flu-like symptoms. She was in bed for three days. She had a rash uh, around her hairline, her shoulders, chest, and back. Um, I had her take a baking soda bath for it and uh, rest and, and lots of fluids like you would do for somebody with the flu. But on the third day she woke up and had this uh, unidentifiable rash on her arm that appeared to be either a burn or um, an insect bite. So I had her urine tested for cesium exposure and that actually came back negative and um, she saw the doctor for follow-up the other day and I'm actually going to get him on the phone right now and share that conversation with you. Plus, you know, she's 18 and we technically, we don't think we cannot talk this with you on the phone too much, but I know you were with her on the, on the room and all that things. But, um, um, basically what the biopsy uh, revealed that, um, it was, um, it was a scar, which was on um, um, external trauma. It was a friction blister, very possible. Then it, it's possible that it started with uh, with the trauma of that area. Could have been a bed, like a, a like a bite. Could have been a, a, a friction, an erosion, and then around it, it was developing a dermatitis. Nothing bad, you know, this is really what it is, and then there doesn't be some scar tissue there. Then, uh, really, the treatment is what we, we gave her the cream, and that should go away if, you know, she doesn't, doesn't have, she, we don't want her to pick on it, or just use the cream, and then it should feel really good. Then that's it. I was curious if you've had any other cases like this with that, um, Have you had anything though that was um, that's been possibly linked to rain exposure? I mean, this could this have come rain from exposure? could this have come from a chemical or something in the rain? Uh, you know what? It could be anything. We we don't know what triggered it. Like at this point, there's no way you can tell what happened. Like we can tell you what we see now, and we can tell you what it is now. But what caused it? Could it be hundreds of things? Do you know of any other cases, possibly, like in dermatology, that might be talked about where um, any kind of rain exposure is causing this, like in other parts of the country, particularly in no, the Pacific no, Northwest? No, no. Okay. No, not really, no. Yeah, no. All right, well, I appreciate the information. Okay, sure. Yeah, okay, have a good day, okay? You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, I apologize if the, any part of that recording was difficult to hear. I would transcribe it, but I couldn't understand quite everything that she said either. Um, I did want to share with you uh, this post on any news of um, some things being found in Japan. Mothers with young children having the same anxieties, they talk about bizarre rashes, high fevers, uh, blood noses, and government and industry failures that they cannot forgive. Uh, this mother is worried about a persistent rash on the body of her four-year-old son. It's been there since August and left scars all down his arms and hands. The doctors gave us steroid cream, which only made it worse. That was the uh, same thing that happened with my daughter. Uh, what seemed to work for her was a burn cream. My friend's child, who lives in the same area as us, got a similar rash mid-year. Uh, this woman, her seven-year-old son, Diado, was playing outside 
When she turned on the radio and heard about a series of nuclear explosions, then Diado developed a rash on his neck. Four weeks later, the baby's son got his first ever blood nose. Uh, school would not ignore requests to not give her child milk. Some of the other symptoms, um, there's clusters of res residents with persistent nose bleeding and diarrhea. It's also being found among Tokyo residents. And this um, doctor is a Hiroshima survivor. Assessing 50 patients at a one-off clinic in the middle of the year, people presented with purple spots, nose bleeding, high fevers, diarrhea, aching bones, and extreme fatigue. If you have any of these symptoms, um, I, I would expect rad exposure, especially if you're in the Pacific Northwest, uh, on the west coast of California, or in the areas where we are seeing such high mortality rate increases, um, Idaho, Montana, uh, Utah, Wyoming, and Denver, and I'll, I'll post a map of that from the CDC under this video. Um, basically, what we have is a, a, a burn and scar of undetermined etiology. So I was hoping that we would have a little bit more information um, about this case, but uh, apparently we don't. So I'll put a link to any news for this article. And if any of you guys um, hear of anything, any other cases, I had quite a few people that had emailed me after the video came out of my daughter's arm reporting similar uh, rashes and so forth in their children. And if you had any kind of follow-up testing or, or conversations, please share those under this video or email me and I'll include them in a future report. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone.